talking about foundation plants. First, we need to move some. It is hot as So I've got an endless amount of landscaping to do here at my new house, and I plan on taking you through every single thing that I do here, teaching you what I'm doing from edging mulch beds to shaping mulch beds to how you pick what plants to put where, which brings us to our first thing today, and that is foundation plants. So this is actually a pretty simple concept here. As you see, this is a very narrow bed between my house in my walkway and then over there it opens up over there um, and we'll talk about that later but for now the only goal for this bed right here and the same thing for if you have a bed that's much larger around the side of your house the back of the bed you want something that is going to cover the foundation now for those of you who don't know this right here is the foundation of my house whether you have a basement or you have a crawl space you have a foundation on your house. Now for me here, my house is up on a slope. Don't mind the uh, crap dirt. If you're interested in lawn stuff and you don't follow my channel, hit the subscribe button because I've got a ton of stuff coming on this lawn right here. But my house is up on a slope and we have a basement. Now this is my garage, so I have a foundation here as well. Um, but the front of my house is up pretty high out of the ground. As you can see, the back of the house is not, front yard's on the slope. And so I've got foundation showing more so in some spots, less so in some spots, but there are still foundation showing. But even if you have less foundation showing, or maybe your siding even goes all the way to the ground or almost to the ground, this same concept applies no matter what situation you're in. So whether you have a narrow bed like we have here, or you have a bed that is much larger, the plants that are closest to the foundation, you want to use plants that are going to hide this right here. So that is where something like this comes in. This right here is a boxwood. This is a uh, green mountain boxwood. This will get about four feet tall, two to three feet wide, and so that will get big enough to cover this right here. Um, and it's evergreen, so that means it's going to be green and have leaves on it all winter long and all year long. Now this isn't a one size fits all. Um, the same concepts apply, but you have to find plants that you like, you like the look of, that fit this description in terms of, I want something evergreen. That means it's not gonna lose its leaves in the winter and then expose this all winter long. These things that I'm planting here or that I'm going to plant along the foundation in the back of the beds is going to be something evergreen, green all year long. It's going to be big enough to cover the actual foundation here so that it's not exposed. And then it's also going to allow us to put some plants in front. Now, in this bed right here, I'm doing one row. Don't have enough room here to plant stuff in the back and plant stuff in front. However, a bed like this, or a typical bed that isn't long and slender, is going to allow you to put bigger stuff in the back and then kind of stack it in the front. Now we're gonna talk about that and layering and textures and stuff in a separate video, um, but you get the idea that along the foundation you want something that's gonna be bigger and then in front of it you'll put something smaller so everything can be seen from different angles. Now I do already have a few things planted in here and we will go over what we have here as soon as we're done planting the rest of the stuff. Bounce it. 
So a couple things to keep in mind here. One, I would typically recommend putting these things on a new bed. If you don't have any material, no rock, no mulch, you just have dirt, plant before you put the rock. The reason why I did it first, just wanted some dramatic effect for the beginning of the video. Mm. The second thing that I want to remind you of is at least me here. I'm leaving about a six inch ring around the plant here, and that is where I'm going to put some mulch. Don't have any today, of course, forgot it. Idiot. But the reason why I want to put some mulch around there, one, these are new young uh, plants and seedlings and the rock gets hotter. So uh, I want to kind of protect them by putting some mulch around it. It won't get quite as hot as the rock does, but also the uh, mulch just holds moisture and uh, for new seedlings or plants, bushes, shrubs, whatever you're planting, uh, that's going to help hold moisture, which is going to be way more beneficial for the plants than uh, just getting the rocks wet. It'll get down in the root zone, but uh, it won't stay there quite as long as if we have mulch and it holds onto the moisture. I'm actually going to wet down the entire rock area so you can see what it'll actually look like when the dust is off of it. Man, that looks so much better. Shoo! I love it. These slate chips are by far my favorite rocks to use in a landscape. Give her a quick tug and retracts itself. Shoo! Hose link, hose reel is a game changer. Link down in the description. Check it out. If you do not have one of these, you are uh, seriously missing out. These things are amazing. So now that we have this stuff planted and the rocks in, at least to the edge over here, this right here is going to be a separate video because I've got something special. I'm going to dig up this tree right here and put something here that uh, I think you guys are gonna wanna watch how I show how to do this. Um, but know that if I were planting stuff, I would use the same concept as this right along the foundation and uh, plant stuff here. If you wanna see whenever I do this, hit the subscribe button and follow along. Let's talk about these plants. So to set the scene here, we have two windows. We have this wall and we have this wall, and I kinda of wanted them to be separate but symmetrical at the same time. So on each of the ends right here, we have a Japanese sky pencil holly. What this is here, it's small now. All this stuff is small, but you have to kind of uh, plant for the future. You can't plant based off the size now because all this stuff is going to get bigger. This right here will get about two feet wide and six to 10 feet tall. So it'll fill in this space here, uh, basically from halfway, possibly up to the top of that window. And I put that on the corner of the edge here to soften the corner. That's what I wanted here. I wanted something that would grow up and fill in this space and soften this corner. And then same thing over here, it is matching along the corner. It will fill in this space and soften the corner here, which will just take away from the hard angles and it'll just soften this place up and make it look way better. And then in the center, since this thing's offset and I just kind of wanted to separate the sides, this right here is a lemon thread false cypress. This right here will get about three to five feet tall, two-ish, three-ish feet wide. So it will also fill in this. It won't be as tall as that, but it'll just fill in this space and separate this window from this window. And in between we have three green mountain boxwoods all spaced out evenly and these things will get they'll get roughly three or four feet tall two or three feet wide i will shape them uh, into circular balls to kind of uh, match the space here probably just about midway up to to the top of that ledger board there and as you can see here everything is in a perfectly even row these are halfway between uh, the sidewalk and the house even. And then once this is tall, you won't really see that this side isn't straight with this because this will kind of break it up. And then this side right here is halfway between this. One of the most important things when it comes to landscaping is have it symmetrical. Now I'm not saying you have to do the same thing there as you do here or whatever you're into, but in terms of this row right here, you don't want this plant to be back here and then this plant to be up here a little bit and that one be off, it just won't look right. Make sure you measure it out, place them exactly where they need to go so that everything is in a straight line.
And then lastly, and not symmetrical at all, have nothing to do with this, we have a hydrangea right here that's going to fill up this space. It'll get about three, four feet tall um, and same width. So it may end up being bigger than this space. Actually, I may have to transplant it. I don't know yet, um, but it'll look nicely right here in this space. And then the last point that I wanna make, and we're gonna actually have an entire video based off of this when we do our other beds, is that you wanna mix up textures and colors as well. This will actually be a yellow color, and the holly will actually be a darker green color than the boxwoods, which is nice. And all of that plays into having a very appealing to the eye landscape. It's very nice to look at, very good curb appeal versus just if we just had boxwoods all the way across here, or if we just had one thing all the way across here, to me, it's boring, it doesn't stand out, and it doesn't complement your house or your yard, if you have a nice yard. And to me here, obviously this is the Lawn Whisperer channel and I'm all about having a nice looking lawn, which we will soon, but there's nothing that makes your property look nicer, makes your lawn look even nicer than having nice landscapes with good edges, tight edges, clean edges, very nice looking material in here and very uh, appealing plant material inside the beds. So I'm gonna dig this up, transplant it somewhere else, and then we're gonna get started on the uh, DIY project right here. So if you're interested in what I'm doing here, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Today.